Hey everybody, before the video starts, I just have a quick announcement to make about some uh, new changes to this channel. Uh, you're good, I promise. Firstly, I would like to apologize for not uploading last week. It was kind of very stress. Uh, it was a very stressful week. I had a lot of things to do uh, in the semester. I had to study for a few things uh, outside college. So. It has been a little bit stressful, so I apologize. But uh, to compensate, I come, came up with a new project I think I'm going to be able to pull, which uh, it will happen alongside the ILO, IO library, which is more for a beginner-friendly beginner video, right? You get uh, into the intricacies of assembly, but it will have something more complex now, a new series where we develop an operating system. We're gonna start by the bootloader on real mode. Then we're gonna walk up uh, to uh, protected mode, then to real mode, to finally passing control to the kernel and then develop the kernel itself. So I think it will be quite a journey. There, is, it will, there will be longer videos, so it's, it's gonna be something harder for me to edit by myself but I'll try my best I'll try my best and yeah uh, I had this plan for quite a while now I think I started it uh, almost two years now I think almost almost I believe and well I had to read a lot of stuff I just finished reading the quantitative approach for computer architecture and a lot of other books that I was uh, pending. This thing is ancient. This thing is very, uh, very good. But I, ha I borrowed from a friend of mine. The thing was full of dust, but it was awesome reading this. So yeah, thanks to that friend of mine. I'm gonna, not gonna say his name, but okay. With that said, I hope you guys enjoy this new series in, in the future and yeah share please share so let's go to the video last video we we're talking about the print string function we've done the print string function where we print a selected string into the standard output and now things are quite even easier for us because here these next two functions that we're going to do in this video they're print character and print new line basically print character accepts a character code directly as its first argument and prints it to the standard output. Okay, uh, we can see the definition is very similar to the print string function, but there's a little catch that I wanted to work before we start uh, developing. So, coming here in our code, and if you look down in the print string function, we're gonna see that it calls string length. And string length actually expects us to deal with a, uh, a pointer to a null terminated string. Because uh, print string uses string length, which walks through a memory until it finds slash zero, which is the null terminator. But uh, if we just pass the raw character, since that's what we want to do, like A, which the code will be 10, sorry, 65, a new line, which the code will be 10. Uh, there's no terminated. There's gonna be a lot of garbage in our code. It's not gonna be complete, right? And that's risky and, well, it could even crash. So for us to fix that, here's the trick. So I'm gonna create here our label or our function print char right and then we allocate two bytes on a stack with the following sub sub rsp 2 rsp is the register for the stack pointer and remember this in the on x86 and the majority of architectures the stack grows downwards, right? So that's why uh, we are in the, the the biggest memory position, but that is the the smallest position, 
considering the stack data structure. So if we want to increase the stack, right, push things to the stack, we got to decrement because uh, it grows downwards. I, I think you understand that, right? So, all right. So now after we allocate two bytes on the stack, uh, those two bytes will be one for the character and one for the null terminated. Then we're gonna do the following. We're gonna move RSP and DIL. This puts the character at the top of the stack, right? What do you mean? We use DIL because it's the lowest eight bits of the RDI register, exactly what we want. So we're uh, on the top of the stack, we have the lower part of our RDI register, which is a single, only a, a single character, right? That's exactly what we want. Next, next thing we do is we set to move byte of RSP plus one and zero. So what does that say? The next position after, after the stack pointer uh, is gonna be a zero, which adds a null terminator right after it. So we have our character at the topmost element of the stack. And then by adding one, we're going one level uh, below the stack, below the stack pointer and saying, okay, we'll have a zero here and boom, we have a uh, fake one length string right on the stack. Perfect for us to use. We don't need to create uh, 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 a word, right? We don't need to define a byte, which is zero terminated. We just need to add those two things to the stack and then after we don't use it anymore, it's perfect. We can just uh, clear it out of the way, right? Now, after we do this, we're gonna point RDI to the stack. So uh, we're gonna do uh, mov RDI or SP, and now RDI is a pointer to the stack pointer, <coughs> to the address of the stack pointer, sorry. And so it looks like a proper string now, right? We have, you have the character and then the null terminated string. Then we call print string. And it's completely safe because it prints exactly one character and stops at the null. There's nothing wrong with it. And then we gotta undo the things we did because we can't finish our program with uh, values in the stack. The stack must be cleared out, otherwise we're gonna have some errors alongside the code. So we add RSP two and we return back. So that's what we've done is uh, we build a little two byte string on a fly character plus null terminator using the stack, right? And no dynamic allocation, no hard coding memory, no garbage reads. It's completely safe. We can use it perfectly fine. And this is a super lightweight way to do it actually. Uh, didn't come up with, with it myself. I read about it. I was thinking about the best way. I looked at the solution the book gave me. I wasn't pleased because it had this problem because it, it assumes that uh, when you read something from the standard output, input, sorry, uh, when you read something from the standard input, it will come as an alternated string, but that's not true. It will only come the code character, and if you press enter, a slash n, which is a other character with code 10, but there's no zero there. You get what I'm saying? So that's the big issue here. So, okay, now let's see the other function. Now, we just gotta print a new line. The trick here is to get the code, the ASCII code for the new line, which is actually 10. And after we have that, man, it, it, it's kind of uh, intuitive because we, we only need to call print care, print character, right? 
we have everything we need and then we're basically saying well uh, we're, we're basically selecting a specific character to print and that's it <clears throat> you don't have to do anything else we just gotta pass to RDI since RDI is, is the register which will have the values we want we pass the code 10 to RDI and then call the print character function no need to worry even about returning because print character does that for us so, so that's it that's it so uh, add here the label and then we're gonna move to the RDI register the value 10 and then jump to print character that's why we jump because we're not expecting nothing in return we do, we're not doing nothing and since print character already returns we're gonna let them return for us because what's the point right we're just using a, a, a built-in function to print a specific character for us so that's that's fine we don't need to return nothing here and basically that's it next video however uh, I'm kind of hyped because we're gonna start we're gonna deal with integers unsigned and signed and so I'll try to do two functions per video I wasn't expecting like no line to be this easy but before I thought uh, after I thought a little bit it was kind of ridiculous but this video is already long enough so I'll leave it this way so thanks for watching and I see you next time